Hey, welcome na tilbaka. Welcome back to our grammar section. Definite and indefinite form is always one of the confusing part in Swedish language and also maybe in other languages, especially if you have a first language which doesn't have the definiteness or indefiniteness. For example, like my mother tongue Chinese don't really have any definite form for nouns or for adjectives whereas in Swedish it is one of the important part of the grammar. So today let's explore how definiteness and indefiniteness works in this language. So in Swedish definite and indefinite forms are called bestämd och obestämd form. Bestämd stands for definite form, obestämd stands for indefinite form. Actually the word bestämma is actually a verb in Swedish which means to decide. So you can also understand this as if it's decided or not. Well, it's actually the same thing as if it's a specific thing or not. So in English, the definite form or indefinite form, the definiteness or indefiniteness is actually marked by the articles. So there are three articles to mark definiteness. One of it is a, for example, I bought a car yesterday. Here, a car is indefinite. It means this is something new. So here you would use a car rather than the car. And you use the article de to present definiteness. So for example here, the car I bought is very environmental friendly. Now you're referring to the car you've bought. So now the car is the specific one. So you use the definite form to say this is something special. This is a special thing I would like to mention. But the third article is the actually invisible article we say because it's still important. Sometimes we don't use the article and it's actually also a part of the grammar. So for example, I like cars. In this case, you wouldn't say I like the cars because uh, you are aiming to uh, say the category instead of some specific, some specific bunch of cars. But in Swedish, there are something more to think about when you use the definite forms or indefinite forms. So the definiteness in Swedish is not only represented by the articles, but also the nouns and also the adjectives. So we have definite forms and indefinite forms for both nouns and adjectives, which means we need to also incorporate this system into the definiteness system. So this may be, might be a little bit confusing and abstract now. So we will actually look further into the structural differences later in the part two of this video. So in part one of this video, we're going to focus on why we use be stamped or will be stamped from the definite form or indefinite form and in which situations we will use them. So, när använder vi bestämd form? When do we use the definite form? Bestämd form, the definite form is used for non-information, something specific, something implicitly for the context, something unique for this word, or a naturally related thing for the context. Here are some examples. Till exempel, jag köpte ett hus. Huset är så fint. Here, huset is equivalent to the house in English, but in Swedish you can express the house by merely altering the noun to the definite form. So here, huset et is the definite form of the noun hus. So huset är bestämd form for hus, for ett hus. And when you change a noun into its definite form, you need to also think about if it's an or ett word. Den här bruna väskan är min. 
this brown bag is mine. So here you're referring to something specific, a point to point to something specific. Den här bruna väskan. So this brown bag. But in Swedish, you would need to think about uh, brown has to be altered into the definite form of adjective, which ends with a. And also for the noun, it's also the bestemmed, the definite form of this noun, väska. And väska, väskan, means the bag. Ska du komma på festen på lördag? So, where you come to the party on Saturday? So, the party, festen. Here, it is something implicitly specific for the context. So, when you say, ska du komma på festen på lördag? To your friend, you are actually implicitly implying this is a party your friend should have known. Solen skinner. Solen, the sun, is shining. So the sound, solen, is unique for the world. So in this case, we would use the definite form also. Now, the last example. Peter har fått ett nytt jobb. Kollegorna är väldigt snälla mot honom. So Peter, Peter has got a new job. The colleagues are very nice to him. So here, the colleagues is a natural part of the job. Kollegorna. So that's why we use the definite form. We are pointing to a specific concept which is related to the previous subject. So in this case, we use the definite form. Bestemd form. Kollegorna. Och här har vi plural bestemd form. So here we need to also think about in Swedish, Plural, definite, and singular definite may seem different. So you, you, we need to memorize the forms. So in summary, we need to think about, vi behöver tänka på. Är det ett känt koncept? Is it a known concept? Is it a known thing? Är det känt för den som lyssnar? Is it known for the person you are talking to? For someone who is listening you, to you. So if it is so, you would use bestemd form, the definite form. När använder vi obestemd form? When do we use indefinite form? So we use obestemd form, indefinite form, for something general, for a category of things, or after counting words. This is much easier to understand. For example, han älskar pengar. He loves money. So here money is a general concept. You're not saying a specific amount of money. So here we use just money. Vi gillar polis. We love police officers. So it's a category of, uh, uh, of people. So vi gillar polis. Har du någon bil? Do you have any car? So here, now we are entering the realm of counting words. How do någon bil? Do you have any car? You don't need to use any definiteness here. Jag har tre bilar. It's also very easy to understand. I have three cars. Now, when you're counting, you don't need to use definiteness. So, now you've actually realized maybe that the definiteness and indefiniteness in Swedish and in English are quite similar. The, the reason why we use it are actually quite similar and even when do we use it. But there is a major difference between these two languages, which is the use of the articles. So first and foremost, you may already realize that we don't use the articles the as often because sometimes by altering the noun you are actually saying the thing. So for example, the house in Swedish you wouldn't need to say der huset. Sometimes it suffice with huset. Huset means the house. But there are also something else to think about when using the articles. 
So one of the major difference of the usage of articles in Swedish is that sometimes we don't use the articles in situations we would use articles in English. So artikel saknas när substantivet betecknar yrke, egenskap, politisk åskådning, nationalitet och andra beskrivande egenskaper. So the articles should not be used when the noun is about a career, some characteristics, political views, nationality and other describing characteristics. So for example, till exempel, Olle är svensk. In English you would say Olle is a Swede. But in Swedish, Olle är svensk. Or you can also translate this as Olle is Swedish. Then it's the same logic. Anna har blivit Buddhist. Anna has become a Buddhist in English. You would say a Buddhist because you are in English actually saying she became a specific kind of person. But in Swedish, we say she became a category of person, a new kind of person. So in a general sense. So Anna har blivit Buddhist. Ida och Tova är lärare. Ida and Tuva are teachers. And in English, you would say, for example, Ida is a teacher. Tuva is a teacher. You would use the article because you are saying they are a specific kind of person. But in Swedish, they are not a specific kind of person. We understand them as a career. This is their career choice. This is a category of a career. So we don't use articles here. Olof Palme var socialdemokrat. Olof Palme was social democrat. So in English, maybe you would say a social democrat, but in Swedish, it, we see this as a general category, as a general political choice. So we don't say Olof Palme var en socialdemokrat because in Swedish, the logic is slightly different. We don't see it as uh, a specific kind of person, as we do in English, rather we see this as a category of persons, of people. Okay, let's explore the next situation you shouldn't use articles in Swedish. Artikel saknas när substantivet betecknar en aktivitet i allmän betydelse, det vill säga det menas ingen specifik sak eller person. So the articles should not be used when the noun is about an activity in general, which means it is, has nothing to do with a specific thing or person. So here are some examples. Till example, jag dricker kaffe varje morgon. So here, dricker kaffe, here kaffe is a very general activity you do, drinking coffee in Swedish. So you wouldn't say I'm drinking the coffee or a coffee in Swedish. So uh, next example, Lia älskar att gå på koncert. Lia loves to go listening to concert. So it's also referring to a general activity rather than a specific concert house. Vill ni ta rast? In English you would say actually would you want to take a break? But not in Swedish because rast here in Swedish is referring to a general activity. So likely we would say han vill inte åka tåg, han vill åka buss. So in English you would say he wouldn't take the train or the bus because in English we are referring to the specific transport method. But in Swedish actually we are referring to the general activity of taking train or bus. So here we wouldn't use articles. Ska du byta jobb? Will you change job? So here we are not referring to the specific job. In English you would do that. Would you change the job? But here in Swedish we wouldn't do that. We wouldn't referring job as a specific thing. Here it is a general activity. Alla vill tjäna mycket pengar. Äter du kött? They're also in the similar logic. So here, alla vill tjäna mycket pengar. 
it means everyone wants to earn a lot of money. So to earn money in Swedish here is seen as a general activity. At the shirt, do you eat meat? So here eating meat is also seen as a general activity. So in this case, we wouldn't use articles a or the or en eller köttet till exempel i svenska. So the third situation in which we don't use articles is when the articles are about feelings. So artikel saknas när substantivet betecknar känslor och abstrakta företeelser. Till exempel, nu kommer de med glädje att gå på festen. Now they come with joy to the party. So here with joy you wouldn't say with a joy or with the joy because here it's very general. You wouldn't say en glädje eller glädjen. Så glädje, obestämd form. Men först kände de rädsla för att tacka jag. But firstly, they felt a fear. They felt fear to say yes. Eftersom de förra gången fick sådan ångest att behöva lämna barnen ensamma hemma. Because they uh, lately got this kind of anxiety from needing to leave the baby alone at home. So in this case you see these two marked feelings are without any articles. I think it's the same usage in English also. Och när det handlar om språk, verktyg och instrument eller utrustning eller kläder använder vi inte heller artiklarna. So when it's about language, tools, instrument and uh, equipment or clothes, we wouldn't use the articles. For example, han talar både spanska och italienska. He speaks both Spanish and Italian. So in this case, we wouldn't say a Spanish or an Italian, or the Spanish or the Italian. We say spanska och italienska. Studenterna antecknar på datorer under föreläsningen. So the students take notes on computers under the lectures or during the lectures in Swedish. It should be understood. So, so på datorer. So maybe in this case in English you would say uh, the computers, so referring to the computers in school. But in Swedish here we are viewing, taking notes on on, on computer as a general activity. So as a general instrument to use. So anteckna på datorer. Angela märker bär nästan aldrig kjol. So Andrew Merkel wears nearly never dress. So wear dress. Dress here is also viewed as a general category of clothing. So now I hope you've understand deeply and clearly on how we use the articles differently in English and in Swedish. So the differences arise when we see the nouns differently, see the activities differently. If they are seen as specific, we would use the articles, uh, the in English, for example, when they are seen as general, we don't use the articles or they are not definite at all. But sometimes the definiteness are viewed differently in these two languages. Something are viewed as specific in English, which are viewed as non-specific or as general in Swedish. So this exists, these differences exist. So we need to think more about that and to try to master in which occasions we use which form of the nouns and adjectives or articles. Okay, now let's do an exercise together. It is also a homework for you. Öva tillsammans. Exercise together. Berätta fem saker om dig själv. So tell five things about yourself. 
Du kan berätta en sak om ditt yrke, egenskap, religion, politisk åskådning, nationalitet och så vidare. So one thing about your career, your characteristic or personality, your religion, your political view, your nationality and so on. Två till tre saker om aktiviteter i allmän betydelse. Two or three activities that you do in a general sense. Fyra känslor och abstrakta företeelser. So a feeling or feelings or abstract things that you can think about to describe yourself. Fem, the fifth element. Fem, språk, verktyg, instrument eller utrustning eller kläder. So language you speak or tools you usually use or instrument you play or equipment you have or something you do with the clothings. Do you have any clothing habits, for example? So to mention one of those categories by thinking about the definiteness and indefiniteness and try to tell them in Swedish. So this is our homework for today. Thank you so much for listening. Tack så mycket för att du tittar på den här videon och vi ses. Hej då!